Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space, visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are in a scientist laboratory on the planet Venus, bound hand and foot by Prince Baccarati. As they struggle to free themselves, a vacuum pump steadily draws air from a chamber containing a powerful chemical. Keep struggling, Happy. You've got to cut off that pump before the chemical explodes. The cord is digging into my wrist. How much time have we got? It'll blow up when the indicator reaches one hundredth of an atmosphere pressure. A hundred? Smoking rockets is almost that right now, and the ropes are so tight I can hardly move. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space football adventure, Cyclone in Outer Space. Time is running out, space patrollers. Yes, time is running out in the sensational Name the Planet contest. The contest that's giving away a gigantic rocket clubhouse and 1,750 other swell prizes. So, hurry. Get Mom or Dad to go with you to your Weatherbird shoe store for your free space coin album. Now, inside the album are three silver-colored space coins and your Name the Planet contest entry blank. The blank for entering your name for Planet X. And that name can win you the great rocket clubhouse with a huge motor truck to pull it and $1,500 cash. Think of it, a 10,000-pound, 35-foot-long spaceship on wheels with built-in bunks, lights, lockers, and even cooking equipment. Think of rolling along in your own rocket clubhouse or think of rolling along on a Schwinn Varsity bicycle. 750 Schwinn Varsity bicycles will be given away as second prizes. Schwinn, the streamlined, lightweight bike, America's favorite. It's got three-speed gear shift. It's got two-wheel handbrakes and all the other famous Schwinn features. And you have 750 chances to win a Schwinn. And you know something else? You've got a thousand chances to win a powerful autosonic rifle, an outer space helmet, a space patrol emergency kit, or a swell stainless steel space patrol wristwatch. So take off right away for your Weatherbird shoe store and get your free space coin album and contest entry blank and enter the Name the Planet contest right away today. Remember, the place to go is your Weatherbird shoe store. <laughs> And now, today's space patrol adventure, Cyclone in Outer Space. In all the universe, there is no place more full of tension and fear than in the castle of Prince Baccarati on Planet X. With his plans for conquest of the solar system thwarted at every turn by Commander Corey of the Space Patrol, His Highness has been taking out his rage and frustration on his men. And most uneasy of all is Baccarati's chief henchman, Dr. Malengro whom the prince holds responsible for the repeated failure of the schemes for aggression. For a week now, Malengro has feigned illness rather than endure the constant abuse heaped upon him by the evil prince. But today, he has asked for an audience with his highness in the tower room of a huge castle. Well, well, Dr. Malengro. So you still live here at the castle, do you? I was beginning to think you had gone to Mercury to teach folk dancing or, or some other art worthy of your great ability. Humble apologies, Your Highness. I've been ill. So I have been told. In spite of my illness, I have not been idle. In fact, I have some very interesting information. I'll be the judge of that. Just give me the facts. Your Highness, I have discovered the perfect weapon. A weapon that will not only make it impossible for the Space Patrol to reach Planet X, but also will enable you to strike any planet of the solar system at any time, any place. Just what is this weapon? It is called a torque ray. Torque ray? What the... It is a ray that literally twists matter apart, molecule by molecule, atom by atom. A gun that fires, it hurls a ring of turbulent force through space at the speed of light. Spaceships can be destroyed the instant they're sighted. One blast of the torque ray could tear a hole in an atmosphere shell. A barrage could level the largest city in the universe in a few seconds. And this force is like a tornado or a cyclone moving with the velocity of light. Then did it. How soon can you get these uh, torque ray machines into production? That is difficult to say, sir. I want two dozen of them immediately. 
pull my top engineers off of all the other jobs that's necessary and get into production. But, Your Highness, I don't know how to build a torque ray machine. I know nothing of the principle involved. Then what have you been blathering about for the last five minutes? I'm trying to explain, Your Highness. You see, this device was invented years ago by a scientist named Cyrus Kennedy. I read about it in a 45-year-old issue of the United Planet Science Bulletin. What? And the space patrol must have the torque ray. No, Excellency. The weapon was outlawed shortly after it was secretly demonstrated on Saturn's moon number two. Because government officials decided that such a powerful weapon was not needed to preserve the peace and might tempt lawless persons to try to get the secret. Do you mean to tell me that there is no torque ray in existence? The authorities asked Kennebec to destroy his working man. Where is this Kennebec now? Is he still alive? I have already checked on that matter, Excellency. He is in retirement on Venus. Get him. We'll force him to build some torque ray gun. May I suggest caution, Your Highness? Sometimes it is difficult to force men of integrity to betray their governments. Then we'll trick Kennebec. I'll do it myself. I'll make him think he's working for the government. But, sire, he may have heard of you. You don't think I'm stupid enough to go to him as Prince Baccarati, do you? Get me all the information you can, Malengo. I'm blasting off for Venus. Meantime, in his central office on the man-made planet Terra, Commander Corey carefully examines an instrument from the control panel of a space cargo ship. Standing beside the commander are Cadet Happy and Major Robertson, the chief security officer. This is the worst piece of workmanship I've seen in years. How did it ever pass inspection, Robbie? Well, same old story, Commander. Built well enough to pass the test, and after a few weeks, the elements begin to deteriorate. Well, I'd hate to depend on that cosmic ray detector in any ship I was flying. Right now, hundreds of passenger ships and freighters are out in space with instruments just as bad, or even worse. Have you been able to place the manufacturer of this piece of junk, Robbie? Yes, sir. It's a bootleg outfit on Saturn. They're not only guilty of selling inferior equipment, but they're infringing on patent rights. Oh, stealing from inventors, huh? Yeah. There's a clear case of infringement on this cosmic ray detector, sir. Uh, Cyrus uh, Kennebec holds the patent. Kennebec. You know him, Commander? Yes. Kennebec has given away dozens of inventions just to make space travel safe. He could be a rich man today if he'd patented all of his inventions. This is one case I'm going to take up personally. I'm going to see Kennebec and persuade him to bring suit. In a small but well-equipped laboratory on the planet Venus, Cyrus Kennebec intently goes about his experiments. Apparently oblivious to the presence of a large, important-looking man who has introduced himself as Casco Zarini, head of an interplanetary contracting concern. Mr. Kennebec, it's very difficult to talk with the vacuum pump going. Couldn't we step into the next room for a moment? Uh, just a moment. I'll cut it off. Ah, that's better. Uh, let's complete this experiment later. Mr. Zarini, I discovered a fascinating chemical compound. That's right here in this container. Uh, yes. Uh, n- now about this. You know, matter, under I... ordinary atmospheric pressure, you can heat it, freeze it, throw it around, and the air is perfectly harmless. But in a partial vacuum, it becomes a powerful explosive. The critical point is one hundredth of an atmosphere. You mean you got some of that stuff in that vacuum chamber? Oh, yes, a microscopic quantity. Not enough to be dangerous. Uh, let's sit down on that desk, Mr. Zarini. Here's my king. Uh, it's hanging on the test tube, right? <laughs> yes, sir, of course. I hurt my ankle the other day. Confound it, you. Sir. Now, Mr. Zarini? Now, about your torque ray gun. Uh... Oh, that old thing. It was outlawed years ago. Uh, yes, I know. But as I told you, the United Planets government has given me a contract to build a new spaceport on Neptune. We've got to level several square miles of land. With atomic earth moving equipment, it would be very expensive. Your torque ray could do it quickly and cheaply. It would save the government hundreds of thousands of space credits. But the torque ray is out more. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but I, I can straighten that out. I've already talked to several officials high up in the United Planets government. In fact, I, I have here an authorization from the Assistant Secretary General. If you would just look at that, Mr. Kennebec. Well, in that case, that's different. Uh, how long will it take you to draw up the pens and specifications for the pilot model? Uh, since you're working for the government and the machine isn't outlawed anymore, I guess I can tell you. I never did destroy the plant or the demonstration model. Huh? 
So uh, you mean there is a torque ray gun already in existence? Yes. Of course it's been disassembled. Nobody but me could put it together. Uh, how long will it take you to assemble it? Uh, about five, six hours if I were to. Did I pick it up tomorrow? Don't see why not. Uh, Splendid! Uh, naturally, I wouldn't think of turning such a powerful uh, machine over to an experienced man. I'd like to pay you for your services as operator of the torque ray. If you can get away from your last. It's been years since I've been on Neptune, Mr. Zerini. I'll be glad to go. The next day, a very tired old inventor sits in his laboratory listening to Commander Corey and Cadet Happy. Now take a look at that, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. Recognize that, sir? It's my circuit, all right, but the workmanship, the materials... It's a crime, a downright crime. Exactly. Will you cooperate with us in closing down these crooked manufacturers? I don't mind their using my design. If only they did a good job. This thing could result in serious injury, even loss of life. Certainly I'll help you, Commander. I knew I could count on you. We will have to wait a week or so, however. I'm helping construct that new spaceport on Neptune. This spaceport? Yes, the, the new government project. What government project? Oh, hey, excuse me, Commander. Well, that's probably the contractor now. Where's that confounded cane? Oh, what does he mean, sir? A new government space system. Oh, he's probably got his planet mixed. Some new construction going on. Mercury City Port, but nothing on Neptune. I'm right here, Mr. Zerini. Everything's all right. Commander, Mr. Kennedy. Commander, the I'm voice, it sounds just like... see this rain machine of yours. Baccarati. Don't move. Hide her a few. Kennebec makes a good shield. <laughs> What's going on here? Let go of him, Baccarati. I said don't move, Flory. Oh. Oh. Let go of me. All right, Kennebec. Do as I say, or I'll use this penalizer ray on you. Baccarati. That's right. You might as well know it now. I'm taking you and your torque ray to Planet X. No. No, you can't do that. Oh, can't I? First, I'm going to make sure that Corey doesn't follow us. Kennebec, get that big container of your new chemical and put it in the vacuum chamber. Go on, get moving before Corey and the cadet revive. But what are you going to do? Just do what I tell you or you'll get what they're going to get. I'm going to tie them up just in case that ray charge wears off. By the time this lab blows up, I'll be on my way to Planet X. Oh, Karate, listen to me. You can't do this. Open the chamber. Put the chemical in. Hurry, Kennebec, or do I have to get rough? Hurry. Now, close the chamber. Tight. Okay. Do you realize what you're doing? Of course. Now turn on the pump. Low speed. When that indicator shows 100 of an atmosphere, the lab will blow up. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. They're coming to Earth. Coins from outer space. Terrific space coins. Big as a half dollar. With pictures of planets on them in glowing space colors. Gang, space coins are so good looking, you'll want to collect them and trade them with all your pals. And space coins are free. Yes, sir, you get one in every new package of Good Hot Ralston. And you can get three more special silver-colored space coins and a swell album when you see your Weatherbird shoe dealer to enter the Name the Planet contest. So start building up your collection of those super space coins now and be the first in your gang to have a whole album full. Just get Mom or Dad to go with you to your Weatherbird shoe dealer. Tell the Weatherbird man you want your free coin album and three special space coins. If he's run out of albums, ask him to get you one. And remember, inside that album, you'll also find your Name the Planet contest entry blank. And inside of every new package of good hot Ralston, you'll find another free space coin. That's the new hot Ralston package with a picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the front. But hurry, no time to waste. Get hot Ralston and see your Rutherford shoe dealer today. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, Cyclone in Outer Space. Prince Baccarati has rendered Commander Corey and Cadet Happy helpless with a paralyzer ray, and as a further precaution, has securely bound their hands and feet. 
Forcing the inventor, Cyrus Kennebec, to help him, Baccarati has loaded the powerful torque ray gun in a spaceship and has blasted off for Planet X. Right now, Buzz and Happy are lying on the floor of Kennebec's laboratory on the planet Venus as a vacuum pump gradually lowers the pressure in the chamber containing an explosive chemical. The paralyzer ray is wearing off, sir, but I'm tied up tight. I keep struggling, Happy. We've got to get loose before that chemical explodes. I wonder how much time we've got. Dr. Roddy's been gone half an hour. The rate that indicator is moving, we've got just about two minutes before the lab blows up. Two minutes? Oh, if I can, if I can slide back up against that metal table leg, we have to cut the cords against the edge. Oh, Happy, the cord around your feet, it's working loose. Yeah, but it's my hands, I'm worried about... Never mind them, stand up. Get on your feet, quickly. Yes, sir. I can. Roll over on your stomach. Draw your knees up. It'll be easier that way. That's it. Hop over to the lab table where Kennebec's pain is. See it? Yes, sir. Now don't try to walk. Hop. All right, now turn around and grab the cane. Careful, don't drop it. Uh, I've got it, sir. Okay, now flip the cane around so the curved end is up. Right behind your head. It doesn't slip out of my fingers. If it does, it's the last slip you'll ever make. You're getting it, Hop. Work it up a little higher. Fine. Wow, look at that indicator. It's nearly the one hundredth of an atmosphere. Now hop over to the switch in the wall and hook the cane around the switch handle. Right. Now turn around. Feel around with the cane. I'll try to guide you. You've almost got it. Now stand on tiptoe. That's it. You've hooked the handle. Now hold the cane tight and shuffle forward a few inches. Good boy. Oh, a few more strokes of that pump. Well, yeah. Baccarati sure did us a favor by not letting Kennebec take his cane. Well, not in the clear yet. So we open that valve and let air into the vacuum chamber. Too close to the critical point. I wonder what kind of chemical is in there. Don't worry about that later. See anything to cut these cords with? Yes, sir. There's a knife in the lab bench. Get it, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I've got the knife, sir. All right, huh? We'll stand back to back and you cut the cords in my wrist. And we'll blast off after Baccarati. With all rockets blasting, Baccarati heads for Planet X, carefully avoiding the regular space lanes between the planetary orbits. Cyrus Kennebec slumps miserably in his seat, staring vacantly ahead. Cheer up, Kennebec. In a few hours, we'll be on Planet X, the future capital of the universe. I'll never do this myself, never. What are you talking about? I helped to destroy one of my best friends, and that young man. Uh, I would have taken care of them sooner or later anyway, with your torque ray. Why didn't I wreck that machine when I was ordered to years ago? It wouldn't have made any difference, Kennebec. I'd have made you build another one. You couldn't have forced me to do that. Other men have said that to me. Men younger and stronger and braver than you. And I've seen them on their knees before me, begging for mercy. Far behind Prince Baccarati's ship, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy head the terrified toward Planet X. One by one, the orbits of the inner planets are crossed. Then, even the vaster stretches between the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, finally, even Pluto lies behind them. Nothing in the viewscope yet, sir, except Planet X. I don't expect to overtake Baccarati until we get very close to Planet X. No way of telling what vector he took, but we'll see him when he comes into land. I suppose he's already landed, sir. I don't think he has. Huh? He wouldn't dare take the short vector we did. He didn't have that much of a head start. Commander, I think you're right. Look at the viewscope. The spaceship, ten degrees high. Mm. Private cruiser. Headed right for Planet X. Probably Baccarati, you're right. I'd overtake him right now. Kennebec on the board. We'll keep on his tail till we see where he's going to land. near there, Kennebec. In a few hours, you'll be at work, making more torque rays. I've told you, Baccarati. You can't force me to help you. Please hope. Let me have that control panel. You're being followed, Baccarati. Space patrol ship, of course. It's terrifying. It's Commander Corey. He's escaped from the lab. You double trust me. You fixed it back and up so it would cut off before the explosion. I wish I could. Shut up! You might as well surrender, Baccarati. He's gaining on us. He can board us without trouble. You'd better surrender. Never! Got your torque ray in the cargo hatch. Get back and plug in the power line. You're going to fire the torque ray at him? Why not? 
And don't try to stop me, Rock. Wait a minute. The poor gun is inside the ship. It would wreck us, too. I got it. We landed at the first opportunity. I'll lug the poor gun outside the ship, plug in the power line, and then blast Corey before he can land. It. No, you, you can't do that. Get your hand off of me. Ooh. Try that again, and you'll be really positive. I've got it. I'll set us down in the Black Valley. The mist will give us some protection and a chance to set out the torch gun before Corey finds us. He isn't going to the castle after all. He's going to land. If he has trouble with his ship, he seems to be heading for that big peak rising up above the mist. The one with the crater on it. Probably an extinct volcano. Uh oh. He's disappeared. But on the infrared view scope being happy. He's dived into the mist. He's playing it smart. If he knows that valley, he might be hard to find. Well, just keep looking. Skillfully, Prince Baccarati maneuvers his ship to put the mountain peak between him and Buzz Corey's ship. Then he plunges into the mist covered valley. A moment later, he lands the ship on the valley floor. At gunpoint, the elderly inventor is forced to help Baccarati remove the torque gun from the cargo hold and set it up on sturdy tripod just outside the spaceship. Seconds later, Baccarati has connected a power line from the gun to the ship's electric power supply. And as the Terra 5 circles overhead, Baccarati stands ready, peering up into the swirling mist. Just stand over there and don't move, Kennebec. I must congratulate you on this torque gun. Beautiful talent. The child could operate. Fuck around. He listened to me. Don't fire that gun. Shut up. Shut it up. We'll be coming in for landing very soon. Then here. Light pressure on the firing button, and I'll be rid of Commander Corey for good. There he is, coming right toward us. All right, Corey. This is it. You're right in the sky. No, you don't. Stop it. Get it back. <laughs> You missed him. He's coming in for the landing. What's the noise? You, you like the top of the crater. The volcano. It's erupting. All right, Kennebec. This is what you get for meddling. Commander, the volcano's erupting. The whole top of the peak blew off. Wow, look at that lava pour down. We'll have to settle our business with Baccarati in a hurry. Stand by to land. Standing by, sir. Commander, Baccarati's blasting off. We're landing anyway. Look down there. He's left Kennebec behind. Why, that dirty space rat. We're going to have to move fast. Have cut rockets. Full repeller, Ray. <laughs> Quick now, open the inner hatch. Wow, feel that heat. Down the ladder, quick. <coughs> hey, where's Kennebec? smoke is so thick. I... Over there. He's collapsed. <coughs> yeah, I see him now. Come into the hot lava. It's tearing up the trees and pushing rocks along. You'll admire the scenery later. <coughs> Give me a hand with Kennebec. Yes, sir. <coughs> Quick now, head back to the ship and watch your step. If we go down, we won't get up again. Now, you're going to be all right, Mr. <coughs> Kennebec. <coughs> Just relax. <coughs> that gun will never be used again. No. Hey, it's back there on Planet X. Buried under a hundred feet of lava. But Baccarat, what, what about Baccarat? He got away. Did he have your talk gun design? Yeah. Yes, but they won't do him any good. They're mostly in coat. That's a break. Gentlemen, I hope you'll forgive an old man for being a coward back at the lab. You've risked your lives to save me and... Mr. Kennebec, I got a good look at that torque gun just before the lava covered it. It wasn't a coward that knocked that thing over. I'll say nothing. As far as I'm concerned, we're even. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. This is Commander Corey calling all Space Patrollers. Commander Corey to all Space Patrollers. I have two important messages for you. One, start right away today to build your collection of exciting space coins. Take it from me, space coins are really sharp looking. Big as a half dollar, made of husky plastic, blue coins, black coins, gold ones too, all with swell pictures of planets on them. 
You get a space coin free in every new package of good hot rolls, either instant or regular. Message number two. Hurry and ask Mother and Dad to go with you to your Weatherbird shoe store. Because waiting for you free at your Weatherbird shoe store are special silver-colored space coins to add to your collection. Plus, a handsome space coin album to keep them in. Plus, your Name the Planet contest entry blank. But you'll have to act fast. Get a new package of hot Ralston, either instant or regular, with a free space coin inside. And go to your Weatherbird shoe dealer for more coins and your Name the Planet contest entry blank. At your Weatherbird shoe dealer. See him today. And good luck. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are flying over Crater Valley on Planet X. When they sight Prince Baccarati's ship on the ground, quickly landing, they see the prince struggling with a giant native and rush to the rescue. It's Baccarati, all right, sir. He's beating an old man. I'm trying to drag him into the ship. Let's get him. All right, Baccarati, break it up. Right, I'll get his ray gun, sir. Uh, let go, Vicari. Hey, Commander, the old man's unconscious. Baccarati knocked him out. You're getting pretty brave, aren't you, Baccarati? Beating up an old man all by yourself. Not quite by myself. Get them, Belango. Use your terrorizer ray. We got them both, Belango. This is the last time Corey will meddle in the affairs of Planet X. Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, Under the Sea of Planet X, when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Baylor Kovac, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles with the story of one of the fastest planes in the world and a word from the man who test flies it, Joe Link. It's North American's Air Force F-86B Sabre Jet Interceptor. Speed, well over 700 miles per hour. Wingspan is 37 feet. Length, 41. Cruising range, 500 miles. Now, by special tape recording made at International Airport, a well-known test pilot of the Sabre, Joe Lynch. The D is a one-man interceptor, so when you fly it, you're really on your own. That's why I see to it that I'm in good condition all the time. And one way to stay in good condition is by eating a good breakfast cereal, like rice checks or wheat checks. They're just packed full of energy, and they taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated, bite-sized form. So take a tip from Joe Lynch, George Welch, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas 